Hey crafty friends, this is Chelsea. I'm so excited to share my craft room with you today. This space is on the second floor above our garage and as you can see it also doubles as a play area for my daughter. I love that she can be in here playing while I'm creating. A lot of my furniture is from Ikea and as always my space is a work in progress. I don't really love spending my time organizing, I'd rather be creating. So I just need my room to be functional and tidy so I can find things easily. This video is a collaboration with the Creative Design team and we will be posting videos throughout the week. So make sure you check out the playlist that is linked at the end of this video. So here's the entrance to my craft room slash playroom. I do share this with my daughter. She has a shelf of toys here and she has some more on the other side. Of course, I also share it with my dash hound Frankie. Hi Frankie, <laughs> looking all cute up there. I have on this side, I have a bunch of um, like artwork and displays and stuff on top of this calyx shelf from Ikea. And then I have some of the teal bins that I got from there as well. And then my stamp collection. I'm just gonna give you a quick little tour around the room and then uh, I'll go into more detail. So I have our air conditioner sitting over here and just somewhere cozy to sit. And then in the middle here, this is actually like a kitchen island sort of table. Uh, it's very heavy and uh, it's a huge work surface, which is really nice for doing big projects. And then I have three of the Ikea Malm dressers and some storage on top of here with the uh, close to my heart old large organizers and I have like background stamps and my embossing folders in there and then over here sewing machine heat press die cutting I'll show you inside the drawers in a second and then over here I have my Cricut printers more storage and then cardstock inks markers all the like daily use kind of stuff and uh, my catalogs, some embellishments and things, markers. This is my main work area right here where I film all my videos and I will insert a clip that shows you um, what it looks like with my lights and everything set up. I just took them down for the tour because it's a little bit easier to see everything when they're not in the way. So here is my filming setup. I have two softbox lights. I just got these off of Amazon. And then I have the Archon mount here and just up over top of my work surface. And on top of my desk here, I just have like a photo backdrop taped down. And yeah, that works pretty good. It's pretty simple, but it definitely works for me. I like the softness of these lights. Uh, eventually I would like to have them maybe suspended from the ceiling. Uh, they take up quite a bit of room, so it would be nice to have them up and off the stand so they're not taking up floor space or tripping anybody. But for now, this one here on the end, I kind of like tuck it in and out as I need it. And they adjust up and down too. So it works. Then over here, I have a whole bunch of paper storage and projects. These were from uh, Michael's and also Costco originally, like a long time ago, many years ago. This setup here is also from Ikea. Um, they have a newer version of this. This was back when it was the Expedite. And uh, it was a like black brown color. And when we moved into this house, I wanted it to be white. So my husband painted it and then he sealed it with some sort of sealer that turned everything yellow. <laughs> <laughs> and I just have not had time to repaint. So that is on the one day to-do list. And I have a bunch of sprays and albums and all kinds of things in here. I love the Ikea shelving. It works really great for me. And then of course over here we have the rest of my daughter's little play area and this is actually just like a half wall and the stairs to go downstairs and then you can see down our hallway there I have all my scrapbook albums. 
All right, so I'm gonna start on this wall with my big stamp storage. This is the Calyx shelf. I have one of the bins here that has all my finished mini albums, or mostly finished. There might be the odd thing in there that's not. Photo props, so this is just like flowers and Christmas ornaments and stuff to stage my artwork photos. This one is kind of like the junk drawer. So there's a little bit of everything, as you can see, extra supplies. And then bags, this is all um, different kinds of bags for packaging things up. And then for my stamp storage, I actually have a video on my channel that goes into a little bit more detail about how I store and organize and catalog my stamps. Uh, I do have them in these retired close to my heart organizers and they are labeled with numbers and then also the themes that go in that bin. And then each of the stamp sets, I put the number onto the stamp set so that when I'm putting away, I at least know what bin they go into without having to try and look at all the different categories. I like to store my stamps by category, but I also catalog them in Evernote. So it's super easy to find what I'm looking for because I do have hundreds of stamps. Now down here is where I have my pattern paper. So this is all mostly non-close to my heart pattern paper. So I just have everything sitting in here. A few paper pads, Prima, Graphic 45. Uh, and then I have some bags with like mixed collections, some Bow Bunny, Simple Stories those kinds of things. And then over here is all my close to my heart paper packs. And this is pretty much all I have for pattern paper other than like new product. I don't have them really sorted in here. Uh, there's a little bit of organization as far as like, kind of have all the kid themed stuff together, have all the like kind of pretty and floral stuff, all the Christmas stuff together. That's not, not too bad. Once that bin is full, then I have to purge, give some stuff to my nieces and my nephew. Uh, now that Isabella is getting a bit older, I'm sure she'll want to start playing with it. So that's usually where my extras go, but I try not to have too much left over. And then we have mini stamps. So these are the mini little like M size stamps in their little organizers. I didn't really have another good spot for them. So they go in there. And then over here we have my alphabet stamps. So I have some of these like really large ones. They're like eight and a half by 11 sort of size. So I just end up putting them all in here. And then I have a few other, a few other things in here as well. I don't use alpha stamps too much. And so that's, they all just go in there. My big kitchen island table here, we got from a store called Leon's in their like damage section. It had a little bit of damage on the corners, which has since gotten a little bit worse. I have foam corners on here right now to protect Isabella's head because this is right at the height where she's walking into everything. But I love this table, it's super heavy and it's a nice big surface where I can spread out and have several projects out or make kits, do those kinds of things. I think the guys that helped us move in, our movers were not very happy they had to carry this to the second floor because we are in the bonus room up above uh, our garage. So they had to get it up a big flight of stairs. But now that it's here, I think it's, it's here to stay. Now, one thing I love about this room is all the light. I have this whole wall that has windows all the way down it. And then if I turn, try not to make you guys sick. On the other side, I have another window. So the natural light in here is awesome. I love it. Here by the window, this kind of like juts out a little bit, kind of goes outwards and it's just about the perfect size to fit these Malm dressers from Ikea. So I'll give you a little look at what's inside. Like I said, this one has my embossing folders and my background stamps in there. And then I do have my drawers labeled. So this one is labeled foil. 
and I have my mini mink, all of my like mink supplies, whole bunch of foil, other mediums to work with it as well. I have a little bit of like gold leafing and foil flakes. And then underneath here, I actually have some of the bigger mink, like the carrier sheets. And then I have some foil for my Cricut as well. And then here I have molds and paper clay. Uh, this doesn't really fit with the whole foil, but I had nowhere else to put it and I wanted it to be up here, not tucked away in storage or anything. So this is where it is for now. I love all of these Prima molds. And when I open the next drawer, you'll see some of the things that I have done with these. All right, drawer number two. This is kind of my collage sort of drawer. I have all my tissue paper and doilies, paper flowers. I have a whole bunch of technique tags for different uh, technique classes that I've taught over the years. Here is a bunch of those paper clay molded shapes that I could use for like collage or more dimensional art on canvases. I used to do a lot more of that type of thing. And I don't do as much of it anymore, but I really hate to get rid of all this stuff because I feel like as soon as I get rid of it, I'll want to get back into it. So I have like the Tim Holtz little glass bottles and a bunch of like bottle caps and frames and basically stuff for doing like altered art and canvases. And then the bottom one here is just business stuff. I have like close to my heart shipping bags and that kind of thing. Over here in the middle, I have my sewing machine and my heat press. I just got back into using my sewing machine this past year and I find if I leave it out, I'm much more likely to use it. If it is tucked away and I have to like go and get it and pull it out and set it up and plug it in, it's not that much work, but I still don't end up using it. So it stays here. And uh, if I wanna do very much sewing, I will move it up to my big table because uh, this is a little bit low to be kind of leaning over trying to sew a straight line. But it works to have it out and handy and plugged in ready to go. And then underneath here, I have a drawer full of most of my coloring mediums. So I these drawers are quite deep. And so for some of these little things, they don't, work necessarily really well. Uh, so what I've done is done little baskets and containers from the dollar store. So I have like my archival inks, stays on inks, those kinds of things. And then under here I have like a color wheel, my jelly plate, a bunch of like mixed media type stuff, glitters, flakes, texture, items. I have some uh, pastel sticks. I think these ones are ink tents, pencils, different kinds of pencils, watercolor sets, some markers. So basically any of my coloring stuff I have. I have a melting pot. Uh, so I have the like melt art ultra thick embossing powder, which is in those big jars. I have twinkling H2Os and watercolor pencils. I really like these slim trays. These ones are from Dollarama in Canada. And I love how skinny they are. I've used them a few times in these drawers. And then we have color burst powders. So like watercolor powders. I do not play enough with this stuff anymore. I used to use it a lot when I was art journaling all the time and teaching classes and that kind of stuff. And then all of this is broken up into little, little trays because it's just easier to pop out little trays in these deep drawers. I have Pan Pastels, Wink of Stella. I have some Fiber Castell markers down in there. So all of these are super easy to just pull out. The little foams for the Pan Pastels, more like shading pencils, gelatos, those types of things. So all of that is in there. And then the next drawer down is paint, paintbrushes, re-anchors. I love this drawer. <laughs> I don't paint as much anymore, but uh, I still love it. So I have all my extra paintbrushes, palette knives, all that kind of stuff in this big basket. 
And then underneath, I have all my close to my heart reinkers for my ink pads. Uh, I don't have all of them, but I've been collecting them for quite some time. So a lot of these are actually like older colors. And it wasn't until recently that I split up my drawers with these baskets and it really helps. I feel like I get a lot more stored in them. These are liquid, um, not liquid watercolor, they're India ink. And then I think so. I also have some acrylic inks. Yeah, acrylic inks in here, acrylic paints, all my golden paints. Uh, what I have left of my Prima paints, a lot of these little jars have dried out. Unfortunately, it was kind of heart heartbreaking to go through them all and see what I had left that were actually salvageable that I could add some water to and revive them because I lost a lot of them. And then over here I have some tube paints, some heavier body paint. These are large containers of the golden paints. And then I have alcohol, um, alcohol inks over here. So these are those tall skinny ones again. I have the square tools with the felts. And then there's more alcohol inks in there. And super easy that I can just pull out that one medium and bring it to my table to work with. And then a few more, just kind of like random little paints down here. And then the last drawer here is art mediums. So I have more clear bins. These are all, I believe, mostly from Dollarama as well. And uh, this is all like the gesso, the glazes, pumice gel, modeling paste, all those sorts of things are all in here. I have aprons at the back, another big jar, I think of glazing medium. And then an, my favorite art apron is up here, along with some more big bottles of things. And then I have water cups and uh, sponges and things for texture and alcohol wipes. And then just a few containers of um, more craft paint. I had a huge selection of craft paint because I used to teach classes with it, uh, but I'm not using it anymore, so I just kept my nicer paints for myself. All right, for the last one here, we have my die cutting center. So I have my big shot here and then a whole bunch of plates, a punch board, my long arm stapler. And now this drawer I've been working on fairly recently, so it's maybe my favorite. <laughs> I just redid my die storage. So I have uh, a lot of my dies in envelopes now. Um, some of these other brands, they like come in like paper envelopes, so I haven't repackaged those. I'm probably just going to leave them. All of that was kind of already in those kinds of uh, containers but I got these envelopes off of Amazon I th believe it was Erin who suggested these and I'm not sure if I end up with the exact same ones that she has but I started looking to see what was available in Canada and these are the ones that I found so I have labeled all of my close to my heart uh, dies and I have even combined several into one envelope especially when there's only like one or two little things to a set. Uh, I thought it was better to combine them. They're still on their magnetic sheets. And then I have them all in here. I have not labeled like categories, but I do have them together in categories. So like all the words are together. All the general like shapes are together. Uh, I'm just really enjoying this. It makes it super easy to find what I'm looking for. Kind of standardizes a lot of the packaging. I'm really happy with that. And these clear bins, again, are from Dollarama. You can see I have some press and seal in the back there. And then here are some of the larger sets. So same thing, these are just larger ones. I did have to like cut down some of the magnet sheets to get them in here, but I like how they are all labeled and easy to find and easy to open and put back. 
And uh, the closures on these are not fantastic. They're, they kind of have like these two slits and those half circles are supposed to pop into those slits. A lot of these I have just tucked in the, the opening. I've just tucked in the top of the envelope into the pouch and that is working fine for me. I just don't want pieces falling out, especially when you have alphabets and things like that, but I'm not gonna mess with trying to close that closure every time. And then here I have some of the extra envelopes. One of the packs that I had tried out had some larger ones that actually don't fit in this drawer very well, but I don't wanna get rid of them because I might find another use for them. And then I have a whole bunch of magnet sheets because when I condensed everything together, a lot of my close to my heart dies, I was able to condense them down onto smaller sheets. And so I have lots of leftover magnet, which I think could come in super handy. So I'm hanging on to that. Down in this next drawer, I have my ribbon, stickers, pocket cards, and some general embellishments. So I have like longer packages, some rub-ons, some stickers. Um, a lot of these are like packs of ephemera and die cuts and little word stickers and things like that. All embellishment type things and lots of just like general embellishments that I could use for different things. They don't necessarily have to be with a certain paper pack. This is all I have left for my pocket cards. Uh, I really purged out pocket cards because I rarely ever use them. So most of the ones that are in here are packs that I have already started using and I had some left over. More just assorted embellishments. I have some plain cards for like journaling. I have all of my twine and some seam binding ribbon back there. Some of my extra embroidery threads. I have washi tape here and I put it in one of those baskets again. And then this is all I have left for my ribbon. And then all my embroidery floss is in one of these containers. And then a little bit of like thread and pins and stuff for my sewing machine. So that drawer is working pretty well. And then the last drawer in here has uh, envelopes, card bases, tags, photo placeholders, eight and a half by 11 cardstock, and some leftover like little card kits that I have back there. Oh, and as well as all my plastic sleeves that I put my cards in to sell them. I like storing them in the sleeves. I think it keeps them looking nice and uh, not getting like dirty and fingerprints and stuff all over them. So that is it for this row against my window here. So if we turn to the left, this is where my Cricut is. I have my Cricut mats here and I just keep them tucked under my machine. Then I have a laser printer, an inkjet printer, and then all the printer paper and stuff is in there. Now, over here at my desk, I have all my workspace wonder. So this is the close to my heart storage line. And I really enjoy these because they all just kind of nestle together. Uh, they don't like click together or anything. They just nestle together and it's all modular, so you can reconfigure it however you need to. You can move things around. I have thought about moving uh, like half of my paper trays over and then putting the inks above both of those. I just haven't done it yet. I have distress paints up at the top. I was hoping by putting out some of these things, I would use them a little bit more. It has not happened yet. <laughs> I have shimmer trim up here, all of my uh, stamp pads, all my close to my heart stamp pads, all of my close to my heart cardstock, and this is something I did rather recently. Um, I have white at the top, and then I have labeled all of these pieces with all the different color names and my label maker. And then when I need a color, I just pull on that tab and it pulls the whole section of whatever is in that color out. So this doesn't work really well if you have like a lot of every color, but I don't buy like 24 packs anymore because I'm not making kits all the time. So this works great for me. I love having it close to my desk and uh, just, you know, really easy. I sit right over here, 
So it's really easy for me to grab cardstock and same for when I'm doing Cricut projects, super easy to grab more cardstock. I have a little stamp cleaner in here and a cardstock swatch for the Close to My Heart colors. And then I have my shimmer brushes. I have some Copic refills. I would really like to get some more, but um, I haven't yet. And then I have a bunch of different kinds of pens, journaling pens, uh, brush lettering pens, those sorts of things. And then I have some of the Spectrum Noir markers that Close to My Heart used to carry. And then my Copic collection. I have, you can see there's a few holes because I have some colors out right now that are with a project that I've been working on. This part of the Workspace Wonder, the pen holders are no longer available. They are retired, which is really too bad because I love having one slot for each marker because then I can make sure I get everything back where it's supposed to go. Um, but these also can be reconfigured and stacked different ways because it works with the whole Workspace Wonder setup. So that's my happy little corner of color. I love looking at this. Right now I have my ink blending brushes right here. I've been looking at different options for storage for them. Uh, this is just like a brochure holder that my husband had that he wasn't using and I just kind of stuck them in there for now. I'm not sure what kind of storage I want to have for them so I haven't picked anything up yet. I have my all-purpose mats rolled up here in a jar. I have a piercing mat right here. So important, paper towel. And then I have one of these spinny caddies. I think almost everybody has one of these in their craft room. They've been around for a long time. This has come with me to all my different uh, craft spaces. But this has, you know, all the basics. Paint brushes, water brushes, sanding stuff, screwdrivers, glue, um, rulers, scissors, all those kinds of things. All my little tool stuff are all in there. Then over here I have my favorite ATG gun right here and then my rolls of foam adhesive. And then in the drawers here I have one drawer for, uh, I have my stamp that goes on the back of my cards and then I have current embellishments that are in the catalog right now so that I can easily grab things that are in stock. And then in here I have extra stamped pieces. I have some of my hand stitched pieces. So when I'm looking to go and put a card together, I can come here and just see what I have that's already done. And then I also have a drawer for die cut pieces. All my extra die cut pieces go in there, whether it's extra Cricut cuts or it's extra die cut pieces. Um, they all go in there and then I can just fish them out when I'm ready for them. I don't have them super organized, but that's fine. I like to pull out the whole drawer and just dig through and see what's in there. And then this section here is kind of all my planning stuff, catalogs, planner, uh, my planning book where I like sketch out my designs and stuff, my tri-blend markers and paint markers. I believe this holder is made by Spectrum Noir to hold the tri-blend markers. Um, but I also have like some of their metallic pens and then the paint pens in there as well. Then we are at my work surface here. So I have my external hard drives right there. You know, computer stuff, my stamp chamois. I try and keep this fairly tidy so that I don't have like a bunch of clutter in front of me. And then here I have all my foam adhesive all my like rolls of adhesive, glue dots, and then all my stamp blocks. Oh, and speaking of stamp blocks, down here I have my mega huge garbage can because I hate having to empty the garbage. <laughs> so I have like the biggest can that I could possibly have under there. And then I have my paper trimmer and my stamp platform and my Versamats, all things that I grab for all the time. I also have this underneath my desk. This is the Ikea Alex drawers, but the long drawers. And I wish I had more of these because I love how they fit really small things. So up here I have all my embellishments, little things like 
sequins and mixes to go in shakers and a lot of my like collage pieces and different things like that. In these little books I made, these are all like sticky back embellishments. So anything that already has adhesive on it goes in here. I have two of those. There's another one back there and I have them marked with what is on them. I have wood embellishments, acrylic embellishments. So the majority of my embellishments go in here. And this is just a happy drawer. Every time I pull it over, I'm like, oh, I love how this looks. Drawer number two, this has all my embossing powders. I have like a little glitter roller here, embossing dauber, funnel, Versamark, anti-static pouch. Uh, these are all perfect pearls. I have the Lindy's, Lindy's Magicals. One thing that I like about investing in something like this over an actual paint is that it doesn't go bad. I've never had any of these go bad and I've had them for years. They're just a dry powder. So if you want to get something and you're not sure, like little jars of paints and things, those dry out, whereas powders don't. And you could mix these into any kind of wet medium that you want. Drawer number three. I have some of my Cricut supplies, um, different vinyls and transfer paper and stuff. More mica powders, because I love mica powders. <laughs> so a couple different brands in there. This is all my glitter. And then I have some more like chunkier glitter back here that I don't use very often. But there's another thing that doesn't go bad. You can keep glitter forever. And then my next drawer here, also a pretty one. This is all my distress inks. So I redid this a while ago and I am already kind of bursting at the seams. I have my re-inkers and a couple of extra ink pads at the back. This is the bulk of Distress Inks, Distress Oxides. I have a few extra newer ones right here. And then I have all the little foam applicator pads with the names on them. So the gray topped ones are for oxides. These ones are for the regular Distress Inks. And if I wanna use an inking tool with my Close to My Heart inks, I just pick one of the regular Distress Inks that are close in color, and I use that same foam pad for that as well. And then I have my round tools right here. I only have three of them and I find that's usually all I need. I'm usually not doing more than three colors. I just swap out all the pads and file them back with the name. This drawer I have all my stickles and my liquid pearls. I have some close to my heart masking paper. My brayers are back there. Hot glue, hot glue gun, heat tools, and my um, coffee filters for my embossing powders. And then the last drawer here is for all of my punches, my bow tying tool. I put this one on the bottom because it is really heavy. So uh, just in case the bottom ever falls out, it's already at the bottom. I don't use my punches a whole bunch, but they're nice and handy when I do want them. All right, we'll come on over to this corner. We have my daughter's little play castle right beside us here. And there's Frankie hiding out in the castle. And then in these containers from, uh, most of them are from Michael's. I got a couple from Costco back in the day. I have different project bins. So whether that is like the projects for club, uh, other projects I'm working on, all my page protectors and flip flaps are in here. And now this is how I used to always store my cardstock by color in these bins. So when I open one of these up here, you can see I have swatches of all the colors on the lid and then all the colors are in the bags. So this worked pretty good. Uh, I didn't mind that at all, but I was getting to the point where these bins were full, like bursting full and I just didn't have any more room in them. So then I decided to try out my other storage, which I love, but I love keeping retired colors because you never know when you're going to need them or maybe you're doing a project with something else. Uh, I you know, like to make big shapes for my daughter, cut off the Cricut for like her birthday parties and stuff. So it's good to have as many colors of cardstock as I can manage to keep. I never get rid of cardstock. 
So also in here, I have like heavyweight white cardstock. I have Copic paper, uh, fundamentals. A lot of these are mix-ins. Close to my heart used to have a line called fundamentals. And I think I have a little bit left in there, but a lot of these are the mix-in papers because they can go with anything. Uh, and then over here, I have things like acetate, uh, holographic paper, watercolor, Bristol, vellum, glossy cardstock, glitter paper. So this is all like my specialty stuff. And then if we turn, this is underneath a desk. I have Frankie's little bed right there. And then I have my sponge dauber container and then I have my misting box under here. And then I have uh, just different containers with like finished pages. So I keep my pages stored by year. And then I actually need to make some containers for 2023 because I emptied the 2021s into albums or the 2020 into albums. And I have some drawing stuff, close to my heart kits, those sorts of things. And then over here, I have all the close to my heart, like how to books with all the patterns. I have other notebooks and painting books. I have my cinch under here, an extra trimmer. I also have um, my Tim Holtz stamps in uh, his binder storage. I have those tucked under there. I don't use them very much, but I don't want to get rid of them. I have shipping supplies and office supplies. All right. On top of my desk here, I have <laughs> this cute little uh, picture that my husband got me of Frankie and a bear from him for Valentine's Day, my mic, and then craft supplies for Isabella. In here, I have my stencil storage, my Copic airbrush, uh, air compressor, my Prismacolor pencils, and then just some albums that are in progress. And then down in this one, I have a bunch of my like workshop handouts, an art journal, some adult coloring books, those sorts of things. And then this bin is where all the new product goes. So before I've decided what project it's going into, uh, any like current product, I have a bin of stamps in there and then also packages of paper. So that's nice and handy for me to tuck those away in there. This little dish is actually for my daughter's first year album. I have four more spreads to make and then that album is done. But I have a bunch of pre-stamped flowers and leaves and bling that I'm using in that album. So I have not put those away yet. And then here under that pretty decoration, I have my miss. So this is something that I have more recently done. It's actually, uh, these are meant for like your pantry. And you can put the third layer on if you want to, but you don't have to. I got these off of Amazon. They do turn. And I love them. <laughs> I love having all these colored, colorful sprays out where I can see them. I was hoping it would help me use them more. So far that has not happened. <laughs> but I'm hoping to remind myself to grab them and use them. All right, you guys, there is my space. I love my space. I wish it always looked this clean. Usually this table is covered in projects. Usually my die cutting area is covered with like scraps of paper. There's always like filming stuff out and projects waiting to be finished and those kinds of things. But I absolutely love this space. It is one of the things that, um, I loved about this house when we looked at this house and I was like, oh, I really want this house because <laughs> uh, I could see this as a beautiful scrap room studio space. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you check out all the rest of the creative design team's videos and I'm sure you'll find lots more organization and uh, storage ideas.